Welcome to the Howie Games, the Australian Test Captain here in Coogee, Pat Cummins. Paddy, great to see you. How are you going? Good, mate. Yeah, thanks for having me. Just down the road from home. Oh, I'm pumped to have you. I, I like, I, I watch what you guys do and you're always so prepared and I've got to be honest, mate, I've dropped the ball. I've come from three days off and I left a vital piece of equipment behind. So... How do you reckon the setup's going at the moment? I'm leaning on a rubbish bin at the moment. I, I claim yeah. to be Australia's number one sporting podcast. I've got a couple of bits of lacquer band. There's wires surrounding you, and my microphone is leaning on a rubbish bin. If I was a test batsman, how easily do you think I'd be to get out at the moment? It'd be tough to move your feet with all the wires going on <laughs> around here. Um, I did ask you what prep you need from me. Yeah. You said nothing. I said, nothing. Oh, okay, I'll go down to the Coogee Pavilion for a couple of years, yeah. you know, just to get a good feel for. And how'd the prep go? Good, yeah, happy. Um, Prepped very hard. Good. Uh, probably an extra hour than I probably needed to. Oh, that's okay. Ah, feeling good. Um, the other thing, I, I welcome you to the mag- and you say, oh, you must spend a lot of time here. I welcome you to the magnificent Crown Plaza Kuji. During the Test match, we're lucky enough, typically because of the King, because Warney <laughs> first time we came here blew up. We didn't have good rooms, and ever since then, we've got these amazing ocean views. Yep. But today, we're back to old school. So I welcome mm. you to Kuji Bay view of the tennis court. Sort of raining in Sydney, surprise, surprise, and yeah. the block of flats. How do you like it? Oh, it's beautiful, isn't it? It's I think that the king would find it pretty tough to the smoke in this not, room. <laughs> he wouldn't stay in this room for more than two minutes. He'd ring our production manager, Tracy. I wouldn't. That was the, that's the thing about the king. If we'd get to a dodgy hotel, I wouldn't say anything because I knew the king was arriving that day, <laughs> and I'd get a text probably an hour after I arrived. H, we're not staying here. Meet you downstairs in ten minutes, and we'd end up in a different hotel room. It's the same, like Davy Warner's Is similar, it may, not the hotel room, but dinner reservations. No, nah, we can do better than this. Right. Like just those little things that people are fine, just, you know, we'll cop it. It's, it's just, you just, every team needs one of them. It just, it just has a lower threshold than and you. And that's Davy. Yeah. Well, that's good because obviously... It's a great tragedy in all seriousness that the Shane is no longer with us, but it was announced that Davey's joining Fox whenever he decides to wind up his test career. So he, he could be my man if the hotel's not up to scratch. I exactly. just text him. Yeah, absolutely. I, I thought it was, you know, I know his future contract, but we yeah. thought he might have been on for this summer, the amount of spider cam <laughs> work he did. And, <laughs> you, know, you had a half an hour meeting with him out well, there every day. <laughs> well, that day it was raining, and I think I was lining up to do an interview with Nathan Lyon. I knew he was on board when he leaned over your magnificent old pavilion change room there and shouted out, mate, do you want a coffee? And I thought, wow. <laughs> this, this we bloke, don't get that treatment. This bloke's really signed up at Fox, hasn't he? <laughs> uh, hotels, you must have stayed in a million. Talking about that, what's the best one you've stayed in? Question without notice. Where, where's oh. one where you've gone, wow, this is outstanding? Uh, Dubai is amazing. Dubai. Dubai. Um, I reckon Indian hotels, we always joke, they do the best blackout blinds. Like right. you just sleep Which is for a massive hours. Key. Oh. It's a key. Massive key. You don't know what time it is when you wake up. It's that little game. It's like, is it 6 a.m. or is it 11 a.m.? You've got no idea. You're going to a different world. Um, but, I mean, Dubai is amazing. Yeah. Okay, so that, that's one side of the equation. Where's a hotel where you've thought, oh, no, <laughs> like in your cricket journey or in your life journey? Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, India, you get the full spectrum. You get right. the most amazing, opulent five-star hotels, and then you also get some places that just – look like they haven't been open for two years and they haven't like you know you, they've got one place for dinner and you see them defrost the food that's been in there for two yeah. years um and by all reports you know that was the norm 20 years ago so there's not too many of them um they're all i mean yeah they're all you make the most of it everyone's as long as you've got good internet for the boys to play playstation yes on, i saw a lot of that in the test how, how did you go during the, it won't go too far because hopefully, Paddy, it's behind us forever. How did you go during lockdown when you, you couldn't leave your hotel and you go to the cricket ground, the hotel room? Did you find that difficult? Yeah, we did. Um, sorry, that probably no, sounded like a father. did No, it. no, you I didn't, though, did you? You're, you're perfect. No, no, You've never done anything wrong in your life. People <laughs> were telling me this all the time. <laughs> um, yeah, we. it was, it was tough um, in a few regards. One... Just knowing as soon as you're on a flight overseas, you're two weeks away from coming home. Yeah. Um, so, the, you know, one of the times I flew off to the T20 World Cup, my son was three days old, four days old. So I left and, you know, one thing thinking, you know, they left alone, but also going, oh, geez, I'm two weeks away from being home if anything goes wrong. Did you cry when you left? I did, yeah. yeah. Only time ever, really. Is it? Yeah, um, I get that. So I think that's, you've never felt further away from home than, than during COVID. And then just the day-to-day 
you know, you can't walk out and get a coffee. All the simple things which aren't big deals as a once-off, but when they compound over months and months, um, they do add up. So I, on that side of it, it's quite uh, hard. I think all, all the same at the same time, we're really appreciative that a lot of people were locked down at home and we were on the other side of the world doing what we love doing and we're doing it with you know, 20 other guys who are our best mates. So it's kind of weird. Some parts of it really, really enjoyed. Some other parts were different and, and tough. Funny you say about, about the best mates. There was a, I don't know even the way to describe it, Paddy. There was a, no, no, there was stories floating around at the start of the summer that the Australian public had gone off the Australian cricket team. And I often think to myself, so, so I'll ask mates and friends and not one of them off the Australian cricket team. So I don't know if it's a media narrative, but I, I say to people you know, at the start of the summer, they're like, what are the players like? I said, watch, and I sent you a message about this the other day. I said, yeah. watch the first hour of Fox Cricket any day and you'll see these blokes are the nicest blokes <laughs> in sport. <laughs> uh, uh, to me, mate, it used to, in all seriousness, it used to be the V8 supercars of all the sports I worked on. They were the most open and affable and happy to chat. But you you, you watch Fox Sports now and you're giving us a, a bowling lesson on how to bowl in swingers before the game or Travis Head's in the net telling us what he's doing or Alex Carey's explaining his keeping all with a smile on your face, all with as much time as the world we want to get. That The team's always been good, but in the last year, I don't know if it's a reflection of you taking over as captain or Andrew McDonald being coach. This is on you, not, not on past history, but your cricket team is the nicest sporting team I reckon I've ever dealt with at the moment. Like They are outstanding men, and I never got the, uh, the Australian public is off this team narrative as a result of that because of first-hand experience. Yeah, well, I'm, I mean, thanks for sharing that. Um, glad to hear it. Uh, we talk a lot about... Yeah, it's, it's like, there's always you know, cliches and little lines mm. of you know, block out the noise and and we really do have to in, in professional sport um, just to survive really more than anything else because there's so much that gets thrown about, um, and I've I've been really proud with how the guys have you know even something like the test documentary which has just come out you know we invited. You I have yeah. Oh, how good! Yeah, so good. It was great. I forgot half of the right. stuff that happened in it, but. You know, even I was chatting to a couple of ex-players and they always ask, you know, what was it like bringing the cameras into the change room? Geez, I'd never do that. Mm. And there was a real sense of responsibility, I think, for the team of, you know, it wasn't that long ago we were the kids idolising the Aussie team. And I've been really proud with the group. Just I don't think they've lost sight of that, any of the guys. So whenever they do an interview, um, whenever they're happy to share kind of their, their lives on um, the test documentary, it is coming from an angle of what's best for cricket. You know, what's, yeah, we're so lucky to do this for a living. Um, we know there's a lot of fans that make that possible. How can we try and give them a show? Um, so, yeah, I'm glad you've kind of seen that because it's something we do talk about and, and do think about. Um, and, I mean, I'm biased, but boys are awesome. They're they so are. good. They, they are. Yeah. They're, like, they're awesome cricketers, but, like, if you... You know, if if I look at it, like Usman Khawaja, he, he's like he, he, funny guy, funny guy, great sense of humour. Alex Carey, well's nicest man. Travis Head, he's pretty quiet, but he's always giving with his time. You, you bowlers are all like, you know, Starkey's you're always walking around cuddling people. Like <laughs> away from cricket, good people, good people. Yeah, I think. Yeah, rock solid. Like, absolutely rock solid. Um, and just no fuss. You know, it's so easy to find drama and, and fuss in what we do. Especially, you know, add in time away from home, mm. pressure, people watching. It's so easy to create drama and find drama, but you know, this team is really good at just trying to avoid drama. So, uh, so how do you go when the drama's in your face? When people, when you're at a press conference, and yeah. how these questions are asked? I, 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 I'll be so uncomfortable asking them. If I tell <laughs> you, I oh, pack, you know, read in the paper this morning that your team's disliked by the Australian public. Like, how do you handle that as a 28, 29 year old with all the cameras on you when when you know the type of people that you're dealing with? Yeah, I think it's easy when I do know the type of people that right. you're dealing with. I think you can be apologetic or you can try and try and explain every situation until you're blue in the face. Yep. Um, but really, when, when you know that the guys that you're working with are A-grade people, I don't really feel like I need to do much explaining. It's hmm. No, nah, it's different to our lived experience, you know. We go and play 
at the stadiums and the fans are still awesome. The kids are still awesome. So, yeah, there might be some callers into talkback shows or comments online that are saying otherwise. But you know what? It's not what we're experiencing. So you just can't let it affect you. And how do you deal with negativity in general, Paddy? There's so much in your profession, in my profession. I'll show you my Twitter feed after a big bash game. And there's, <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing there? Yeah. Who's this bloke in the comedy box? Like, it's constant, but people feel the need to vent. How do you deal with negativity yeah. then to your world? Oh, I mean, it's it's easy to say that it shouldn't be out there. And of course, you know, it's, you'd rather it not be out there, but it is. Um, I think you've got to deal with it just like any other um, any other aspect of, of being a professional, um, whether it's you know, physical, um, you got to prepare your body right, um, preparation, all those kind of things. I, I feel like it's a tool you can dial up, you can dial down. Mm. I think whenever a player says, this is a joke, this is, you know, this noise has got to me, et cetera, et cetera, and blaming the people that are writing all the comments, I think they've they've missed the mark a little bit. I, I think it's, you know, we don't have to open Twitter. We don't have to open Instagram. Like we do have some tools at our disposal, some levers we can pull. So um, personally, I try to avoid it as much as I can. Um, I'm not great. Yeah, sometimes, you know, curiosity gets the better of me. But I think if, if I just reflect on some of those comments and things people say or what I'm going to get asked and if I genuinely kind of honestly think they're off the mark to what I'm trying to do or how I've, you know, acted, basically, you know, if I can still sleep at night, look myself in the mirror, I move on with it really quickly. It really doesn't bother me. So it doesn't, like if you look at a direct message on Instagram and or someone sent you a, a tag, you, it, can you can you just put it straight behind you or does sometimes it go, oh, gee? If it's someone I don't know or yep. who I think has a really good opinion. Yeah, I, I, I'm much better now at just parking it to one side. Right. To, um, then even, you know, when, when you're younger, um, I feel like I've got better at that. Um, I think, again, if it's, you know, someone who knows cricket and it's around cricket or knows culture or teams or leadership and they've got an opinion in that space, of course, you give it a bit more weight, a bit more thought. Um, again, I, I do feel like what we're doing inside our group is so hard to to understand unless you're in there every single day. Absolutely. It's, it's hard to have an opinion on how someone's going when you just turn up for the first ball of a summer and you haven't seen them, that they've been on the road away from their family for six months or yep. those nuances that um, sometimes gets, gets missed. So who's in your life, whose opinions do you value? Who do you look at and they say something to you and you're like, yeah, like my wife said something to me last night and I was like, Ooh. Yeah, <laughs> but she said it from a point of love, and I was like, "Oh, gee!" And I reflected on this morning. I said, "Okay, well, I probably need to be better on that area." Like, whose opinions do you actually listen to and think? Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Wife's a big one. Um, again, she she's knows me um, and really well, so she knows when something's on my mind. But she also has a really good way of bringing clarity to me um, on different situations. So. Um, you know, we've got a 15 month year old child and like even the other day I was venting or, or doing something and she's like, hey, look at Arby. When he's 16 years old, do you reckon he's really going to care that this thing happened? And I was like, oh, yeah. kind of like a moment of clarity. Perspective. Um, perspective. So, um, you know, she's great. Around the team, um, there's some really good senior players that I think have a really good just bullshit radar yeah um you know ronnie andrew mcdonald the coach is fantastic at that george bailey selector um yeah just just you know people some close mates outside of cricket again getting a good pulse on they absolutely love cricket they're kind of you know in the public are these articles or just really getting the temperature of the room from people um outside of the 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 immediate squad as well brothers dad um, so yeah, lots of people I love chatting to and always pick up, you know, different, different things from, um, I'll ask you later who you think Pat Cummins is, but to give people an idea of who I think Pat Cummins is, you walked in here and you can use the chap's name. You can not use the chap's name. I don't want to embarrass you, but you just told me a brief story out to lunch with a fella that had a connection with you for a long time. Could you share me 
with me what you would just tell me that the chap you had lunch with and how long you've known him? Uh, yeah, I was just having lunch with um, Basil Sellers. I'm not sure if he's a listener. Sorry, how are you? No, nah, well, he's not. He's, he's one of the few <laughs> we'll Australians that not Paddy. Get him involved. Um, but he's a uh, really, really generous supporter of um, of many charities, Australian sport, big supporter of cricket in New South Wales and, and Sydney Swans. But he... Um, and various charities all around the world, but he um, he has a, a scholarship program, Basil Seller scholarship, where he basically gives a you know, small donation to about ten um, kind of different players each year, normally from the age group about fourteen to sixteen, um, helping with just basically their you know a little bit of cricket coaching, but helping pay for their accommodation or travel if they're from the country, maybe buy them you know a cricket bat. Um, or money to go towards education. Um, so maybe a little bit older because, you know, I was at university. So he helped pay for my first year at university. So, so. so he gave you one of these scholarships? He gave me one of the scholarships. So, yeah, that would be a good 15, 16 years ago. So, um, yeah, I hadn't seen him for a few months. Stay in touch. So try and, yeah. He, uh, How old is Harry? Uh, Basil. Basil. Um, he's, Basil's 90-odd, yeah, 95 or something, but fit, maybe 91. And you still catch up with him? Yeah. Yeah, quite a bit. So to people uh, listening to me, that is the Pat Cummins I know. Like that's, um, you got a busy life. <laughs> but so, and as I said, I don't want to embarrass you, but I think it's, to me, that is you, that the fact you're still catching up with Basil shows the type of person you are. I'm not going to ask you to comment on that because I'm not going to embarrass you. You asked me <laughs> how you need to prepare for this. You texted me last night and you said you're at the Coogee Pav. <laughs> so actually, before I ask you, what, how, what's life like when you're not playing cricket? So when this comes out, you'll be in India, um, hopefully one nil up in the series, but th- this is a short period. Like, yeah. a- a- is there is there normal Pat, or is Pat always thinking about in this particular instance India? No, I'm pretty good. Certainly much better than I used to be. Just switching off. Um, I think once I started playing all three formats and weren't injured all the time, I, I kind of I was all cricket and I felt like I just got burnt out. Really, oh. really, really fast. So um, I'm much better now. When I'm home, I'm home. Um, so, you know, even if I've got to do some training, but I'll try and schedule that in like first thing in the morning, get it out of the way, and then the day's mine. So, um, yeah, these couple of weeks, I'll just go to the beach most days, get out, you know, take the, um, take Albie into the pool, go get coffees, catch up with some friends. Just went up the coast for a few days with family. Oh, where'd you go? Uh, Narrabeen, Northern oh, Beaches. Nice, yeah, nice. nice. So. And so last night when you were at the Coogee Pav, yeah. how many dudes are coming up and wanting to talk cricket with you? Uh, there weren't too many. Really? I was, no, I was with a few of the Sixers boys actually. Right. Um, no, there's a couple. It's like, it's funny, like a weeknight, you're normally pretty safe, but right. Saturday afternoon, you're pretty safe. And then once it gets to about three or four o'clock and everyone's got a bit more courage and you've got to, got to, got to duck out and of how there. Do you, how do you deal with that when... People come up and want to talk cricket. Ah, oh, it's great. Um, yeah, most people that come up are awesome. So that's no, fine. Everyone's everyone always shares their stories of like what cricket means to them, which I think is cool. It's like Absolutely. oh, every summer I, you know, me and my dad go to the SCG, or I was there at this test. So I reckon it's awesome because you do forget about that sometimes. Like even I was thinking about this year SCG. There was the day I think it was day three was rained out. Jamie McGrath Day. And there was something like 20 odd thousand people here. And I was looking around, I was thinking everyone's woken up this morning or traveled to Sydney. They've all hopped on the bus or driven in. That Everyone's got their own story that they do every year for their CG. And I was like, that's pretty cool. Like, It's so different from our experience where we drive in and we play a game. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I do hear, enjoy hearing those stories. Yeah, it must be nice when people come up and say, oh, I was at Boxing Day when you did this or I was at such and such. You know, we all have those memories with Cathy Freeman in Sydney or whatever it might be. But when people come up and say, oh, Paddy, I was, you know, near here when you won the Ashes or something or I was there when Scotty Boland was doing his thing or it must be must be nice. Oh, it is. And we play so much and I've got a terrible memory. So half of these things I genuinely forget. Yeah. Um, and hearing them, you know, like the... Scotty Boland, don't forget that. Uh, but yeah, the you know the last Ashes, I was here on that day when you did this and you won it on day four. I was like, oh yeah, I forgot about that. That's, that's pretty cool. Righto. You asked me how to prepare. We I get back to it. So I, I often read a lot about someone. Um, 
and then make quite a few notes and then try and put them to the side. But to be honest, Paddy, my preparation, apart from not bringing all the equipment, I've just had three days with my beautiful wife up north um, away with a three-day big bash game. Beautiful. Our wedding anniversary. So my preparation has been limited. So I've written Lucky down, woman. Go, go to the big bash. For no, no, I've been away from the big bash. No, we've been up at Cabarita. Oh, okay. Sorry, you ever been to a did. place called Housey and House? No, I've heard Cabarita. of it. Cabarita, got to go there. No, okay. I didn't take her to the big bash. I had three days <laughs> off in the big bash. No, no, no. So I've written down four things, and we're going to play a pop quiz because um, cricket's a statistical game. Yeah. What do these numbers mean in your world? And then we can get through your cricket journey. 47th. Uh, test captain. Yes, you are the 47th test yes. captain of Australia. 1946. 1946. Um, days. Okay, days between test matches. Yes, between your test match and injuries and then coming back to test cricket. Tells a lot of your story. Yeah. 21.25. Bowling average? Bowling average. Yeah. Of those that have taken 200 test wickets, only Malcolm Marshall, Joel Garner, and Kirtley Ambrose have a better bowling average than you to 200 test wickets. Uh, my personal favourite, 3.2 million. <laughs> uh, before tax. <laughs> the before exchange ta- rate. And the exchange <laughs> rate. The IPL deal. And a final one for you. I think you won't get this one. 121. 121. I wouldn't spend too much time thinking about this one. No idea. That's my room number here at the Crown. Okay. <laughs> so like, those numbers in some ways summarise your whole career, but where does it start? Tell me where um, where your folks are from, brothers and sisters. Tell me about young Paddy. Yeah, so we grew up uh, Lower Blue Mountains, about an hour west of um, city. Um, we had decent-sized backyard, and, yeah, I just feel like my childhood was in that backyard outside. Got two older brothers, so I'm one of five kids, two older brothers, older sister, younger sister. Um, mum and dad, all sports mad. Dad, cricket mad. Um, brothers, cricket mad. So as soon as I could walk, I was basically in the backyard chasing them around. All right, give me the backyard set up at the Cummins house. What was out, what wasn't out? I, I love discussing backyard cricket. <laughs> yeah, so it's like slight downhill. Right. Um, probably more than slight, actually. So you're bowled with the slope behind you? Absolutely. Right. Um the run out, the run up was probably longer than the pitch. <laughs> the pitch right. was a good, it was probably yeah, you know, eight nine meters. Used to use a, a rubber ball, um, and we used to mow the pitch every day before play, and then get the hose and hose it down. So I had a bit of zip in. Oh right, bowler friendly. We, we say like a, a good twenty there is worth a test hundred. Okay, as a kid. And you're you're facing your older brothers. Older brothers. Okay. Um, and then we had the used to have so three of us, one bowled, one bat, one kept. And then we'd have the slip corners, the trampoline. Legit, we here? Yep. Trampoline. Trampoline. Right. And then we'd, <laughs> so like rectangle, so behind the bowler, kind of mid off, mid on, that was the boundary, four and six, um, four along the ground. And then it's kind of had a fence, so above the fence was six. And then either side was um, half out if you hit it over the fence. And half out, so half if you did out. it twice, it's you're just, out. Right. So you're half out. Half out. A nice variation of the rules up there. Yeah. But the curveball was they both had dogs and we we're all terrified of dogs. <laughs> so you're half out, but you had to go and get the ball. <laughs> so you could lose the lead. So my oldest brother, Matt, was terrified of dogs. So regularly he would be half out, hear the dogs barking, just go calm out. <laughs> oh, you'd just be dismissed yeah. full out. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. And was there, as, as the youngest, um, it would have been hard for you we, we, when you were... When you'd bowled for four straight hours and then got nugged over first ball, <laughs> were you straight back to the top of the bowling, Chris, or were you going inside and whinging to mum and dad? We were pretty good. We didn't have too many blow-ups. Um, like a couple of stories stand out. I remember I um, hit my brother in the head. <laughs> <laughs> so he went into the shed, he got a helmet. <laughs> And then I hit him where we don't want to get hit. Right. So we went and got a box and put right. it on. Right. And he just, <laughs> just paddled up. Um, I remember that one game. I remember another time I got my brother out and he nicked it, 100% nicked it straight to electric wiki. No DRS. No DRS. Um, huge spike on sneaker, but he didn't walk. <laughs> so I was fuming. So I just refused to bowl at him. So I just kept running in and just bowled wide after wide after wide <laughs> after right, wide. Right. And he'd have to go and pick it up, collect it, until I just, you know, the next thing, the bat was coming straight at me and he was chasing me up. <laughs> as I was screaming for mum. But, yeah, it's like two older brothers, but age was never a, like, there's no handicaps 
for being the youngest. It was, yeah, good hard cricket every afternoon. And when the cricket was on the telly, because you typically playing over summer, and like you know, you dash in and check the score. Who 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 is your man? Who who you're watching? Well, it was early two thousands, so that era is. I mean, all of them really. Um, you know, Langer Hayden, opening the batting, Punter. I um, used to love. It got a little bit of Mark Wall, only the, probably his back couple of years, a bit too young. Um, but Damien Martin, hmm. and then you had you know, Huss, as he started his career. Uh, you know, Gilly, favourite, Warren, he was awesome. Used to try and bowl leggies in the backyard. Um, McGrath, Binger, they, they were kind of, yeah, didn't have anyone in particular that was kind of held in high regard, but that each of them. Uh, yeah. So, so- to divert you for a sec, what, what, tell me the player when you've walked into a cricket dressing room with or against that you thought, heavens above, I'm in the same team or I'm playing yeah. against X. Oh, Ricky Ponting. Was it? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Ricky Ponting. Uh, cause I, so I debuted when I was 18. I finished school, had no you know, big aspirations in cricket, but nothing like didn't think I would ever – it was a career path. Didn't even comprehend that it would be. And then within a couple of weeks, I was playing for New South Wales. I thought, oh, geez, this, like, I might not have to get a job here. And then within a couple of weeks later, I basically had an Aussie contract. And none of it really felt real. Like I felt I was going to get the tap on the shoulder and kind of be like, come on, mate, like, the jig's up. You're not come meant on. to be here, mate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, I remember it wasn't until I was in the Aussie dressing room and I look around and it's whatever it was, November, and I was like, I should be in school here. Like this is school time wow. for the last 20 years, you know, 15 years. And I was like, okay, there's punter there. There's Mike Hussey there. There's Pup Clark there. There's Brad Haddon. There's Mitchell Johnson. And I was going around it all. I'm like, wow, this, this is the Aussie team. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, punter presented my baggy green. And my first thought, I remember this so clearly was, wow, like, I fooled them all I've got, and they can't take this back. They've given it right. like, I thought up until that point, it's like, okay, yeah, you know, the jigs up, come on, off you get. And I was like, wow. once they give the baggy ground, I was like, wow, this is serious. Um, so he was the one, like just whole life was, he was on the TV every time I turned it on. And yeah, now I'm playing the same game as he plays in. When, when, that's a great story, Paddy, and we'll, we'll get back to that. When, when um, Chow Ten got the big bash and they said, oh, all right, so we've signed up. Ricky Ponting and Adam Gilchrist and Damien Fleming and Mark War and well, I'd never worked on cricket apart from beach cricket before. And I remember my boss at the time, Dave Barr, and you know, Ricky's coming in, we'll have a meeting with him, or you have a practice commentary with him. I'm like, oh, I've never commentated cricket in my life. I'm packing it. And I'll never forget. So Ricky must have gone downstairs, it was level four at channel ten and sport was level five. And I presume he heard this because security rings up to the boss, Dave's office. Says, ah, oh, mate, we've got a Rocky Ponting down. <laughs> <laughs> he's turned his back on Channel 9, who have had captains forever and a day, and he's joined this new operation, and our mate security's called him Rocky Ponting. <laughs> he didn't mention it. He didn't mention it when he came up. But, yeah, that was my first Love introduction. It. That's the first time I've met him, and I was similarly awe-inspired. Right, question for you, Paddy. Frequent listeners to this show know that I've got a couple of kids um, that whoever's most invested ask a question to the guest. Um, they both invested in what you do, so they both have a question for you. But first you get awesome. my son, who's 11. His yep. name is Mac, but he rolls as the big penguin. This is uh, what we're talking about. This is his question. You ready? Ready for it. Hey, Paddy. Big penguin here. First off, I loved watching you at the Boxing Day test. It was so interesting. Anyway, I play in the nets all the time with my dad and my sister, but sometimes my sister doesn't want to play and it gets really annoying. What I'm wondering is when you were younger, who did you play in the nets with? So when you've left the backyard, who, yep. who, who's your net buddy? Great question, Big Penguin. Um, I, I mean, it's a bit of a cop-out, but I used to not enjoy training that much. Did you not? No, because I used to, the uh, backyard, bold, battered, kept, and you do it for a few hours and you had a good crack at all of them. Yeah. Um, again, you, you, if you last more than 20 balls as a batter, you're doing all right. So I used to find sometimes going to the nets quite boring. Right. Because you kind of, you bowl and it's, you know, you're one of 10 other people bowling and then you get a bit of a bat and then your batting turns over or, um, so even like I used to go to some of the kids clinics and I, I just, 
nothing for me, nothing beat beat backyard the cricket. Backyard. Um, so oh, I'd go to the nets occasionally, like maybe once or twice. Your dad would take us before a semi final and right. throw a couple of cut shots at us. Right. That's when you knew it was serious. When right. dad was suggesting, because dad you know, loved his cricket, but not like right. no pressure at all. On so us. would he be uh, would he be wanting you to bat or bowl in the nets? Oh, I have a bit of both. Okay. Um, what did he What did he send down? Your dad? What's his name? Uh, Peter. What did Peter send? So down? he's t- my height, six foot four, and he used to bowl the world's loopiest leggies. <laughs> So Come on, Pete. <laughs> you kind of if you don't get to the pitch of it, it's up around your you know right. your ears. Especially on the synth, <laughs> yeah, okay. Um so yeah, honestly, like backyard cricket, um Jordan Silk, who's you know, yeah. really, really good um big bash player, he was in our area, so he used to go over his he had a tennis court. Oh, um over to Silk was he a gun fielder at age yeah. whatever? Yeah. Was he? And um bit world's biggest cricket snuff at that yeah. age too. I remember going over his house a couple of times to watch an ODI and he had a score book and would score. <laughs> Come on. Did he? Yeah. Um, but we, we got the tennis rackets out and, you know, do the big serves and someone's got to try and bat from yep. five metres away and just yep. cop it. Yep. Um, so, yeah. I, yeah, nets weren't a huge part right. of my life. First uh, bat? First bat was a county. A county? A county. Um, my brother bought it with his own money. Um or the hand me down. Hand me down for um, free, or do you have to buy it off him? F- uh, free, which if you yeah, if you know my brother, brother that's a big deal that he gives <laughs> away anything for. <laughs> um, yeah, lethal weapon. And then we had a uh, an angle drive. Oh, Remember that? Yeah. Again, in another hand me down. Um, and then I think, I think my brother loved punter. Uh, sorry, not punter. Um, Gilly. Yeah. So he printed out some Puma stickers oh, and hand right. color them in, and then we we had the Puma angle drive. <laughs> So I used that for a few years. So you search and try to find, but you don't know where to go. So many thoughts flood through your mind.